Folks, welcome to yet another RPG update. In this update, what are we going to be talking about? Well, mostly it's more progress on the UI front. I'm going to show you what I've been doing there. And also I've upgraded to Unity 2.18.3 Beta 5. So I'm going to show you some of the new cool stuff that's going on in there and hopefully how that's going to make our lives so much easier in the course. Okay, so let's dive in and have a look first at the progress to the UI that we've done since. So first things first, let's go to our UI scene. I introduced how I was doing this additive scene. Um, now actually 2018.3 maybe does away with the need to add the additive scene, but let's go and have a look anyhow. So I've been putting together this thing here. It's a stats menu and you can kind of see what's going on here. So the idea is that this menu pops up. It's not just stats actually, it's the whole kind of configuration of your character. And I'm trying to keep things fairly simple because obviously an RPG tends to have very, very complicated menus. And I think that's a bit of a downside to be honest. I think it would be much nicer if they're simple. So the idea here, and this isn't final by any means, so I really welcome all of your comments and feedback, critiques, suggestions of how it might be better in the comments. Do leave some comments. But the idea is this, over on the left, you have all, well, you've got stuff on the right, which has got a bunch of tabs. The idea is that you'd have an inventory tab, uh, sorry, a stats tab, which is what we're currently on, an inventory tab and a skills or abilities tab over here. And what we do is we drag from here over to here, or the stuff that we change over here affects this. So the idea would be, let me show you, if I go and expand out and enable uh, different areas. So I've got this tab area which contains all of this stuff. Let me just show you by moving it around. That contains all that stuff. And by the way, all this stuff is very much built out of very small assets. So you've got a lot of flexibility here. The parts, if I show you these parts, they are very, very modular. You've got bits like the ends of the frame, the sides of the frame. And I've put that all together here in this game object here, the frame game object. If I go and change the size of the frame, you can see that it is changing all these sizes without disrupting or basically making things horrible. The way I'm doing this is using the canvas layout component and using the different alignment modes and different stretching modes. So for example, the border left stretches with the, uh, the vertical axis, but it is stuck to the left hand side. The top element does the opposite. It stretches with the horizontal, but is stuck to the top. And then you've got the frame elements here, which are just stuck to the top right or top, to the top left. And that means that when we change the size of this whole pane, it allows us to scale everything proportionally and basically give us a bit of flexibility if I decide, oh, actually, I want to check, make that a little bit smaller. I don't have to go and relay out the whole thing. And that's the idea. So using these canvas elements is very, very handy. I have used a couple of other types of layout element here too. So one of the other layout elements is here for these guys around the side. You saw they did some interesting stuff. So if I dive into the main section just a little bit, this might be a bit of a moving here then moving there kind of video. So the idea is that we've got these two game objects and I think it is like that. Yep, that's one game object. And if I get the other game object, that's like that. The idea of these game objects is that they are as wide as their con they're as tall as their container. But inside them, they have a vertical layout group, which basically means that everything underneath it gets laid out vertically like so. And that's what I wanted. So that's quite handy, a layout group like that. I'll show you some of the other types of layout group as well. You can obviously have horizontal layout groups. I haven't used any of those but I have used lots of vertical layout groups. I've used vertical layout groups here for the stats. By the way, the stat names are just something we're playing around with at the moment. The idea is this is a silly RPG, so the stat names are a bit silly and poke fun at your typical RPG stat names. Let us know what you think. And obviously all these buttons work as well. Let me just show you that. If I go ahead and hit play in this scene, uh, they work in the sense that if I hover over it, I'm gonna have to scale out a bit. Oh, I can't scale out, oh no. Oh no, I'm trying to, unfortunately this screen is, is a lot smaller than what I'm used to. So what we can do is we can go ahead and scale the whole thing. 
might scale a canvas by doing a scale factor of what, 0.2, like so. Maybe that will work. Uh, let's go ahead back to the game. Okay, so we've got it there. And the idea is there you go. You can click on some of the buttons. Not all of them I've got around to setting up yet, but I can click on all of these ones here for the toughness. They don't do anything yet, but um, it's just not exactly a completely functional UI. Now, for some of these items, I have put together the frames as you just saw, but for some of them I found it easier where we just had an image, like this background image here, I decided that it would be easier to slice that image. So if we go to, a, if you look at the sprite editor, what that means is that I tell it the areas where I would like the content to go essentially, or rather actually what's going on here is I'm telling it that this side here, the bit inside this little box here, that should stretch only vertically. This bit down here should stretch only horizontally, and this bit's only vertically and this bit only horizontally. The edge bits don't stretch at all and the center bit stretches both vertically and horizontally. And that's quite a neat way of from one image making something very easily stretchable and good for buttons in general. So if I go to this tab area, I'll show you what I mean. If I rescale the tab area, you should be able to see that the scroll kind of keeps its height no matter how long I make it, it doesn't get squished and change the aspect ratio of the height. But you can see that it is nicely scaling the content. So I'm pretty happy that that's doing a good job. So that's one way of doing it. And I have tried doing that with the background as well. That's another option. You can definitely do that too. Um, I like the approach I was doing with this one for the background is to use this background and the different borders down here. And the reason for that was very, very simply that I wanted to have more flexibility as to how I did the background, whether I wanted to tile it, wanted to use different things in the background and so on. So I just decided to do it a different approach and it shows you different approaches. It's gonna show you different approaches, which is good. Now I know a lot of you have mentioned in the past that we should really be using TextMesh Pro and you'll probably have noticed that these bits of text here are indeed using TextMesh Pro with some highlights and some drop shadows and stuff. So that's another cool thing to look forward to. And what else is there in this UI? I don't think there's very much else I want to show you in this UI, except that by upgrading to 18.3 beta, I've now got nested prefabs, hooray! Which means that this stat canvas, I can go and visit the stat canvas on its own in a nested, in, in a prefab. So I can look at things that are not actually in a scene. It's just looking at the prefab directly and I can make edits directly to the prefab, which is amazing guys. This is really, really good. And what else is there? So this stats view, I wanted to show you. It has got stats rows and each of these stats rows inside the prefab are themselves a prefab. So I can go and edit a single stats row that can look something like this. You can see, there you go. So I can change any one of these and you'll notice that they have different names because you can override different properties of the prefab. So if I go to the toughness row and expand it out, you'll see that the text element has got its text updated to toughness and I could apply that back if I want to. I can go to the root of the prefab, hit overrides, and you can see where it is overriding the toughness, for example, or where it might be, you might override the text. Here it's not actually overriding the text. And so that's great, uh, you can do that. And also, furthermore, as if nested prefabs weren't enough, I've nested the prefabs again, uh, and I've got this button prefab, which just allows me to set up some of the properties like how to highlight the color of the button, which means that if I wanted to change the click color to green, all I've got to do is change it there. And if I go ahead and hit play, I should be able to click and get a green button on all of the buttons because they all use that same prefab, which is absolutely phenomenal. Something that we've been missing for a long time in Unity. We've had it in Unreal, but now it's arrived in Unity. And I think they've done a really good job with the system. And so far, I'm not having any problems with the beta. So if you do want to go and have a go with the beta, then I'm, so far I'm recommending it. One problem I did have, not really related to the beta, however, was uh, movement. And I'm going to tell you about the movement in just a second. But I just want to circle back around to the UI progress. Because one thing I haven't showed you here, I realized, is I haven't showed you that actually we've got an inventory pane as well. So if I disable the stats and show you the inventory, then we've got this kind of grid layout and we do use a grid layout component. So if I go into the inventory items down here, 
then you can see that this inventory items has this grid layout group and I can tell it how much spacing I should give, how much the cell size should be for each of these guys. And that's how it's laying it out in a group, which means that again, it all resizes nicely. So if I make it smaller, it resizes, the scroll bar resizes as well. So I can make it different for different screen sizes if I wanted to. I'm not planning on doing that, but if I wanted to, I could. And if we go ahead and hit play, let's see if this is gonna work. I should be able to scroll, but because I don't have enough items and I made this a bit wider, it no longer scrolls. So let's try and bring, bring it in a little bit. So our player dialog, let's make that a little smaller. Let's make that tab area a bit smaller too, just so it all fits on the screen. For now, it's a bit of a hack. Let's go ahead and play and there you go, you've got yourself a scroll bar that you can scroll through the inventory again using assets from here. And you can go ahead and download this from my GitHub repo as well. That should all be good. And yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. You go ahead and have a go with this. By the way, all of these assets are for non-commercial use only. You cannot use them for free. So please be careful with that. And what else have we got? Yes, the movement. I'll go briefly into the movement because on upgrading, there was some issues that meant that I had to fix some movement. But basically what had happened is that we got too many things trying, too many chefs trying to cook the movement broth of the character. So what was happening is we had, if you recall, we have a character.cs file. Let me go over to the character CS file. And there's a few things that can change the movement of the character. And those things are the animator and the nav mesh agent. So in fact, what happens is the animator plays some animations and then they, we get a call back into here that says on animator move. And then what we do is we take the the movement the animator wants to apply based on the root motion of the animations it's currently playing and we apply that to the rigid body. So the rigid body is trying to update our position. We're also updating our position by rotating, that's okay. But before we were also having our position updated by the nav mesh agent. So what was happening is that the nav mesh agent in 18.3 was overriding all the rest of it. So what we've had to do or what I've done is we've gone ahead and made it so that the nav mesh agent does not update the position. It automatically recalculates its path and we set the nav mesh agent's next position, which basically means every time we've manually moved the character, we tell the nav mesh agent that this is its new position so that it can calculate the new route. And we have also had to put, I think this is a change in 18.3 again, that we want to apply root motion because what we had was that the this callback was not getting called. Now, it may or may not have been called before. It might be possible that it was just dead code and not getting called at all. But with applying root motion, we definitely get this callback. So that's what's been going on in this update. Hopefully you found the update informative and useful. Again, this is coming in the part two of the RPG course, which is gonna be a new course. And hopefully that new course is gonna be with you sometime in early, very early in the next year. And that's often the question I get asked. Otherwise, do ask any questions you've got down in the comments below. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and subscribe if you want to see these videos first.